Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let us stand on our feet this morning and give the Lord some praise. We have breath in our bodies. We have right activities in our minds because we came to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And for that, we should praise him. The sun is shining. Amen. He's given us traveling mercies for, for those of our guests that are here today. Amen. And we should thank him. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I forgot just one thing. Let's not stop praising him. Let's not stop worshiping. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. He's a wonderful God, is he not? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you will turn in your Bibles with me this morning. We will be reading from the book of Psalms. Chapter 1. Just those first six verses there. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor are sinners in the congregation of righteousness, of righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day, Lord. Another day that we've never seen before, but we will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. Just thank you for your early risings this morning. Thank you for laying us down last night, Lord. Thank you for that peace of mind and that rest, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do for each one of our lives, Lord. We ask you to bless the man of God as he brings forth the word, Lord. Hide him by, behind the cross that we might not see him, but that we see you through him, Lord. Bless that word that he will bring upon us, Lord. Let it fall on our hearts that we might hide it in our hearts so that we not, will not sin against you, Lord. You know what each one of us stands in the need of, Lord. You know where each one of us needs to be touched, Lord. You know where each one of us needs to be worked on, Lord. We just ask you to search us out, Lord. We just ask you to search us out, Lord, and do your will, Lord, what only you can do, Lord. We bless those that are here in person, Lord. We bless those that are joining us online, Lord. And we thank you for that opportunity to reach a broader audience, Lord. Your word will not be stifled, Lord. No pandemic can stop your word from being spread. As a matter of fact, with this technology, Lord, we're able to reach places that we were never, ever able to reach before, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, <coughs> that someone in need, someone in need of comfort, Lord, someone in need of a light, Lord, someone in need of a touch, Lord, someone in need of hope, Lord, Someone that is in need of healing, Lord, can come unto you right where they are, Lord, right where they stand, Lord, and that you have willing vessels that day after day, week after week, will continue to be strengthened, move forward, and, and just be that light, Lord, and be that opportunity, Lord, and be that helping hand, Lord. <coughs> and we just thank you for that, Lord. 
We thank you for those that aren't able to make it, Lord. You know what each one of us are in need of. Those that are in hospital care, Lord. Those that are sick in their minds, sick in their bodies, sick in their hearts, Lord. We just ask you to touch them, to reach out to them, and to bring them into your fold, Lord. And we will be your willing vessels, Lord. We will stand on top of the hill and proclaim your word, Lord. We will have a smile, a handshake, uh, just any gesture that you put in our minds and our hearts. We will be willing vessels, Lord. We'll open our mouths and say, and say that Jesus is the way, Lord, that the Lord loves you. We'll do all that you have us to do, Lord. And we'll be careful to give you the praise you the honor, you the glory. For where one waters, another one plants, another one tills the ground, but you provide the increase, Lord. And all these things we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Let's bless the Lord and join in with the praise team. For God is worthy to be praised. Come on, let's lift our voices and lift our hands and give God all the praise, honor, and glory that is due unto his name, for he's worthy. For the Lord is good. 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 Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you in this place on today. Hallelujah. You've come to give God praise this morning and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah for his word. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. Oh.
Praise God. Welcome to this worship experience on this morning. Uh, this, as we continue our pastor and leading lady of 30th pastoral anniversary on this day, uh, we have taken time out to honor our leading lady, First Lady Walton L. Boyd. So whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you're online, can we give God praise for our First Lady? And I think we can do a little bit better than that if you're in the house. Whether you're online, if you'll put some hearts, some likes, share, we can do much better than that. For 30 years of service, she has 
she has labored, she has toiled here uh, in this place. Uh, and as we reflect back then, as we think uh, on 30 years of service, she has just not uh, toiled here in this local place, but she has uh, toiled and labored for on a state or jurisdictional level uh, of our organization. She has labored on a national level, uh, being national secretary for 40 something years or at 40 years. Uh, been the national secretary of our organization there. Uh, she has given much, uh, and we cannot write the history uh, and appreciate Bishop Boyd without appreciating her because much of what has been done here in this church stands on both of their shoulders, and she has supported it. She's been the first. Uh, if he said that we're going to do ABC, she's the first to say, I'm with it to do ABC. Uh, she's never wavered, uh, and she's she's uh, she's gracious enough to be a first lady. But she's got uh, she's got the clap back in her too. If it needs to be, uh, she'll do it. Uh, if it needs to be said, it'll be said, uh, and she'll add more to it before she takes away. Uh, and then if there needs to be a separate side conversation, then she'll have that too. Uh, but she has done it all. Uh, as we reflect and seen a post earlier this week on Facebook, and it was a uh, uh, happy birthday post uh, this week to uh, the late minister, Ramona Poindexter. And as I seen that post, it made me think of our first lady. Uh, if you go online, there is a uh, app or a program called, um, slip in my mind right now. Um, I'll come back to it. But there's an app on there, um, and basically what it is is it helps at the time of sickness, at the time of death, at the time of birth there. Um, and you come together, you can sign up online there to provide meals for a family. Uh, 28 years ago, First Lady did that same thing here. They just started the app like 10 years ago. 28 years ago, she did that uh, when Sister Ramona Poindexter was sick. Uh, and she gathered the ladies together and said, we're going to feed her, uh, the family at least once or twice a week. Deacon Poindexter was working, trying to raise two young girls. She said, we're going to feed them at least twice a week. And it wasn't an app, but it was on the bulletin board at the back door. And the ladies was there, and they were signing up to feed twice a week to make sure that somebody was taking care of. Those are the types of things that she has done down through the years there, whether it's been going to somebody's house to help them write an obituary, uh, taking people, help them to fill out papers. Um, she's, she's that type of lady, and she is also the pastor of the Methodist Hospital, <laughs> Original Church of God. <laughs> she's, uh, she's there, she's there pastoring and leading, counseling and praying for people there. Uh, at the hospital on her job. My dad often comments that she's got a little chair right there in our office there for them to come and sit down, you know. Some days she didn't brought papers home, like, what's these papers for? And she's there, and she's, this is somebody that maybe can't read too well, write too well, but they've got enough confidence in what she does and her integrity that they'll send their life paperwork with her to have her read fill out the parts they don't know how to fill out, they don't understand this, and then she puts sticky notes on there, take it back to them there, you know. And then, you know, she's got the people that travel from other countries, they go there, they don't bring nothing else back, but they bring Miss Boyd back something, you know, so they gotta bring her back something, you know, from wherever they go to. Um, but she's been that type of lady, so whatever uh, realm she's in, whether we call her leading lady, first lady, some organizations call her mother, some call her elect lady. Uh, she is that uh, and more um, to us there. So we take this opportunity today to celebrate and to honor her on this morning. Uh, as we continue to move forward, uh, we are going to get ready uh, to hear uh, the word of God from the preacher of God because he is here in the house and there is a word from the Lord. As we set out to honor Bishop and Leading Lady Boyd uh, on his 30th anniversary, uh, we try to 
be intentional on speakers and guests that we invited. And we're so glad for everyone who's come, whether you flew here, whether you drove here, whether you're online watching and joining us there. Uh, we're thankful for everyone who's made a special effort to come out on this Sunday to help celebrate our leading lady. Um, and the preacher this morning, Minister Jonathan Rafford, he is um, the nephew of leading lady boy. He is the uh, son of her late sister, the late Dr. Angela Yvette Armstrong Rapford Lewis, because that's how she would want to say it, all the names to be said, so you would know her from wherever. Uh, he is her son, uh, and he is here, and as we thought of people there um, to come and to honor leading lady boy, uh, I can think of no one else except him to come. Uh, he holds a special place in her heart on her side of the family. He is her only nephew. She has nephews on through marriage on Bishop Boyd's side. She's got great nephews uh, on her side of the family, but he is her only uh, nephew. And he takes pride in that, uh, to use that to, when he's in the city, to get some food that he wants at Avant Waltonel. Uh, and she makes sure that she does just the same to cook whatever he wants when he gets close to this area. Uh, and he is a well-traveled, well-versed, uh, studied young man. Um, he does hold a Master's of Divinity from Vanderbilt University. Um, he's professionally, he is a newscaster, a certified meteorologist, uh, and he is here to bring the word of God. And we're so happy to even have Uncle E here with us all the way from Tennessee. Thank you for coming. And we've got my other aunts are here with us. Aunt B and Aunt Sherelle and Uncle Cliff are here with us also to come and make this occasion great and cousins and friends uh, and everybody who have come to uh, make this occasion what it is. And he's here uh, to preach the word of God. He is now located in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, where he resides. And he's on Fox 5, I believe, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you watch it from Atlanta, watch Fox 5 and you'll see him there uh, giving uh, I guess the forecast and the news, but if you're here this morning, you're going to hear him give the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I am assured you he is not only a learned preacher, but he's an anointed preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all my years of church and everything else, uh, probably what was probably the most difficult week of his life, I've seen him stand twice after coordinating two different services in two different cities uh, and give a eulogy that uh, some preachers 50 year season could not do under that type of pressure and weight. Uh, so I know today is much more a joyous occasion for him and he is here to preach the word of God. So if you'll stand on your feet, if you're in the sanctuary uh, and let's just go back, praise team and band, if y'all help me, we'll just go back and sing a little verse of this song. Since there's not a psalmist, I guess I'll have to do this on this morning. Down through the years, God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, God's been good to me. Down through the years, God's been good to me. God. Bring 
it down just a little bit. And we're going to sing this one last time before the preacher comes. And if you know my mom, she, uh, she likes church. She likes all music. She'll get with all music. Uh, but when you sing old songs and hymns of the church, she don't want you sniggling, giggling, you know, kind of halfway singing it. Uh, and then you get up here and the, the new stuff come out. And then she want to, you know, you want to jump all around. She wants you to sing it with some emphasis. All right? So let's, let's sing it one more time. Down through the years. Down through the years. God's been good to me. Down through the years. God's been Receive Minister Jonathan Raffer at this time with the Word of God. tell you, uh, some, you, you got me up here now, because I'm going to tell you at work, I would tell them, y'all got to pass me the mic, because I can't yell up in here today, uh, but uh, glory to God, it is a blessing to indeed be here with you, I think so much has been stated about today, uh, as you all have uh, come here from near and far to celebrate my Aunt Walda, and uh, I, I think about it, and y'all can rest on your feet, or, or um, it was, uh, if they're coming, if you all are on your 30th pastoral anniversary, there are probably about 10 people in here who are in this crowd with me because I have never not known you <laughs> to be the pastor and first lady of, uh, of the original Church of God here in Indianapolis. I don't remember her beforehand, and and all of my life I have looked forward to coming here, and I remember the trips that we would make. Uh, Ain't be pulled up in uh, what I call the caravan, <laughs> but uh, at, at two years, uh, two times a year, or twice a year, we would come up in a caravan like Ain't B drove in, a uh, sixteen passenger van. Is that what it is? And one would be for crusade. That would be the warm trip. <laughs> but uh, something would happen in about two months. Uh, Y'all weren't doing the anniversary back in October. It would be November. Yeah. And uh, I, I would get out of school on that Friday. And I would uh, have to, uh, my mom would have my clothes together. But uh, well, she would also uh, have a coat with her. Because we were going to Indianapolis one more time. And that time was for the cold trip. And that was for the anniversary. Uh, and in the years that we were able to come up and to uh, celebrate with you all always meant so much to me and uh, formed my childhood, formed the way I preach, the way I worship. Uh, and I got to come up here and my cousins, who didn't always want to play church with me, I would get to see them in church. Uh, but here we are together doing it all. I'm preaching, and we're celebrating the work that you all have done in the ministry. Uh, my cousins are doing well, and my family is here. So I want to start with that. Papa, thank you for coming up all the way from Johnson City, Tennessee. I, I will say, as you all give him applause, I I he had the option to fly. I volunteered to buy him a plane ticket. But he is the only man I know who would rather drive seven hours from East Tennessee right in here to Indianapolis. Kudos just for driving. I appreciate it. Uh, and then the caravan is here. Y'all stand up. Uh, uh, my honor is already seeing you all, but top, 
Tasha didn't come on the caravan, but she came in a plane. My neighbor and cousin there in Atlanta, my two aunts, our cousins, family, friends, all joining us today. You all may be seated, and it's so good to have each and every one of you here. I'm in Atlanta, and I guess the way the old preachers do, they would uh, give a check up on the church and let you know what church they go to and all that kind of stuff. I don't have a church in Atlanta yet. <laughs> We've been virtual for quite some time, so I've been virtually listening and being able to join with some churches in word and in worship uh, from a virtual setting, but nevertheless, uh, still in the Lord's army at this time. I uh, would not uh, take much longer here, so I want you to go with me now to a passage of scripture. A very peculiar passage of scripture found in the book of Habakkuk and the third chapter, if you will stand to your feet as we both search and reverence the word of God, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. Uh, for those of you who have heard me preach, I know my Aunt B right there, she's heard me preach more than one time. This is a peculiar passage of scripture, but it is one of my favorite texts for preaching, for I have found much revelation and new revelation for it on today. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. It reads as thus according to the King James Version, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flocks shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. Verse 18 says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me walk upon my high places. Uh, verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my string instrument. And for the time that is ours to share, I would that you would think and pray with me on this thought, the long road to high places. The long road to high places. You may be seated as we pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your presence here today, your presence in worship, but we also thank you for the power of your word. So now, Lord, speak afresh through me to your people, for it is in the name of Jesus the Christ I pray. Amen. I will never forget, it was a hot August day, that first Sunday in August of 2015, moments after being ordained and consecrated as the next bishop of the original Churches of God, your pastor and my uncle stood on the pulpit that morning and quoted these hymn lyrics. I will make the darkness light before thee. Whatever is wrong, I will make it right before thee. All thy battles I will fight before thee and the high place I'll bring down. Oh, the high place. Uh, one would only need to spend about two or three weeks in Sunday school to realize and to learn that our God, the creator of heaven, earth, sky, and sea, has an affinity for high places. After all, our God uh, resides, makes his home in the heavenly of uh, high places. He not only resides there, but he also abides in high places. Uh, he abides in high places, and uh, the scripture tells us that not only does he uh, reside there and abide there, but he has a tendency to meet his people in high places. Uh, just 22 chapters into the book of Genesis, uh, we see the first incidents of Jesus meeting or God meeting a person in high places. It is Abraham, what God would go ahead to call the father of many nations. He meets Abraham in a high place. He tells Abraham, I know you've been waiting for a son. You finally got the son that you've been working and wishing and praying for. His name is Isaac, your one and only beloved son. But I want you to 
to take him to the mountain, take him all the way to the top of the mountain, and there you will sacrifice your son. Y'all, it didn't make sense, but the Bible says that Abraham did it anyway. And when he got to the top of Mount Moriah, the Bible says that an angel appeared and said, look to your right because there is a ram in the bush. Oh, since we're talking about bushes, that's how he got Moses' attention. It was through a burning bush. And Moses was there on a mountain one day, and that's when the Lord began to speak. He began to speak on that mountain, and he said, I have a message for you to tell the king of Egypt. Go tell them that time's up, buddy. Pharaoh, let my people go. After spending his teenage years as a shepherd boy tending to the sheep, his uh, years uh, fighting in the valley, fighting wars and fighting other warriors, the Bible says that David, who was a shepherd boy, a psalmist, and a warrior, was elevated to kingship on a mountain. It was Mount Hebron, and God did it once again in a high place. I think somebody knows where I'm going with this, but the fact of the matter is I think you just need a little bit more information. We'll go over to the New Testament. We all like this song. It's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. Uh, that, that's a good song, but, but the songwriter ripped that from Jesus because one day Jesus was on a mount and he was teaching what we know as the Beatitudes. Say, and he said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Jesus not only taught on the mountain, but the Bible tells me that he also tarried on the mountain. When he was weary, worn, and sad, uh, the Bible says that he went uh, to a place called the Mount of Olives. Uh, and there he had a conversation with the Father. Uh, and he asked the Father a question. Father, will you take this cup from me? But then he ended it with this phrase. Nevertheless, <laughs> whatever you decide to do, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus uh, tarried on the mountain and he taught on the mountain. Yes, we see preaching and we see that he prays. But don't you, don't you ever forget that Jesus also died on a mountain. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. For you and me he died. But the songwriter said that's not how the story ends because three days later he rose again. It all happened in a hot place. It all happened <laughs> in a high place. So it makes sense that when the prophet Habakkuk gets to the end of his book, that he likens the experience in ministry to climbing a mountain. Uh, it, 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 that, that when ministry got hard, the people weren't listening and the enemy got closer. Uh, uh, Habakkuk says, this is like climbing a mountain. Uh -huh. uh, he, he, he paints a bit of a picture for us here. Uh, and really what I think Habakkuk is doing, he's describing ministry and he's hitting the nail on the head because that is exactly what ministry is. It's a sort of mountain climbing, if you will. It's the leading and guiding of God's handiwork, his people across the metaphorical mountain range called life through the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, the valleys and the peaks, the pandemics and the politics through recession and depression from peace all the way to the time of protest and that's what ministry is it's the ups and the downs and so that's why you've taken the whole month of October to celebrate what God has been doing through his servant because you realize that your life in and of itself has had some highs and it's had some lows, some ups and some downs, but God sent you a tour guide just to lead you and guide you along the way to help you make sense out of nonsense. You've been on a mountain and your prophet has been your pastor. 
someone to speak and to make sense out of what you see. Someone to help you keep going when the going gets mighty tough. Uh, and the great thing is about the, the tour God is that, that God sends you a leader who will stand with you when you can't stand yourself, who will counsel you when you don't know who to call, uh, who taught you when you thought you were unteachable. He gave you a leader along the journey on the road to high places. So perhaps that's why on that first Sunday in August, he could stand behind the pulpit or on the pulpit of the tabernacle that day and say with boldness and conviction, God will make the darkness light before thee. Whatever is wrong, he'll make it right before thee. All of the battles that I face, he will fight. And the high place, I know for myself, he will bring down. I, I, I'd suggest to you that as Habakkuk's closing words, that we get an insight or inside look into the prophetic courage that is needed to stay the course on the long road to high places. Uh -huh. uh, perhaps I'm tapping into your arsenal, Uncle, uh, of what you had to do as you were on the road uh, to, to the high place. Uh, first thing I would suggest, it comes up here in verse 17. Habakkuk says, uh, on the road, uh, long road to high places, uh, don't be distracted by the dysfunction. Uh, uh, don't, 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 don't be distracted by the dysfunction. It's right there in verse 17. I like to call these the all those. Let me work with the text right here. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, although there shall be no fruit on the vines, although the labor of the olive shall fail, although the fields shall yield no meat, although the flock shall be cut off from the fold, although there shall be no herd in the stalls, yet, yeah. right here, yeah. Habakkuk lays the groundwork for his case for Kurt. As he paints this, this picture of a mountainside where livestock live and where figs, olives, and fruit grow. Uh -huh. uh, but watch here. He, he puts a bit of a twist on it, suggesting that what is expected to happen may not happen uh -huh. at all. Yeah, right. yeah. In essence, he says the earth may fail to meet my expectations. The seasons are out of sync, and it seems like we may uh, be in that medical, metaphorical mountainside right now. It's hot when it should be cold. It's dry where it should be wet. COVID cases are down one day and up the next. The stock market is a bull in the morning and a bear in the evening. Well, matter of fact, you say you don't got to go to Wall Street. Just look in my wallet. One month you have more money than you can count, and the next month you have more month than you do money, the ups and downs of life. That's what it is. And I just came by to tell somebody that's a distraction. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Uh, 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 there, uh, there's dysfunction everywhere. Yeah. And if we're honest, many of us have had to face this reality uh -huh. that there's a what if factor in life. Uh, minister, uh, in that what if factor, what if what I've been working for doesn't work out for me? What, what if what I want doesn't want me? What, 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 what if it never gets better? What if it never works out? I'm going to be honest with you. I've asked the question, what if the pandemic doesn't end? What if my loved one never gets healed? What if my marriage ends in divorce? What if I never get out of debt? What if I never get that degree? What if? And after you've seen so many things in your life go wrong, 
after you experience more downs than you have ups, you may be asking, what if? But, but here it is. Habakkuk doesn't stop with the what if. Because while he considers the what ifs, he proceeds it with an although. <laughs> he uses the word although, suggesting that Habakkuk is sure of his response, even if he's unsure of the outcome. I think you missed it because you would be shouting by now. Habakkuk is real word perfect with this. He says, although, suggesting that I do not know how it's going to turn out, but I already know how I'm going to act. Maybe I need to say it just one more time. I don't know if it's going to work out, if the money's going to come through, if they're going to get their act together, if they're going to grow up, if it's going to change, if we'll be done with them and that. But guess what? I already know how I'm going to show up. I already know how I'm going to act. And Habakkuk says, although, although, I'm going to tell y'all what I'm going to do. He says, my response will not be based on the dysfunction. That's wisdom. Uh, He says, uh, I'm not going to base my response on everything that is around me, but I'm going to rejoice because of what is in me. Uh, 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 watch this right, right here Habakkuk says that there is something greater inside of me than what is going on around me uh, I have joy because somehow God is always saving me it's right there in your Bible right there in verse 18 Habakkuk says if I'm not going to react and to respond to the chaos and the nonsense having sleepless nights getting stressed out when I watch the news having high blood pressure because of everything that's happening around me he says what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reference what is within and he he squares in on this phrase he says, I will rejoice in the Lord. I got it. Okay, rejoice yeah. in the Lord always. That makes sense. But he, he, this is where he really makes his case. Yeah. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, 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 you do know salvation as the experience that happens. Uh, for most people, when we say it's time to extend the invitation, we all stand to our feet, and we'll do it in about 10 minutes. God, give me some time. Um, you come down, you give your life to Christ. Yeah, we're, we're excited, we're baptized, and all that kind of stuff. And we think about that as the moment of salvation. But to really understand salvation, you would understand that salvation may begin there, but salvation continues all the way to eternity. And each and every day of your life, uh, no matter where you go, no matter how hard life gets, God is always saving you. Uh, God is always restoring you. God is always renewing you. God is always making sure you stay safe so you can get from point A to point B. And I want to know, do I have a witness in the house this morning? who can say through your mask the Lord is always he's always saving me when I couldn't keep myself the Lord was there saving me so I will rejoice in the God of my salvation Uh, uh, so so he says no matter what no matter how bad it gets no matter the distraction or the dysfunction guess what God is has a record that never falls short. He's always doing it for me. I'm good, I will rejoice. No matter how bad life gets, I'll rejoice. Habakkuk shows up to remind you that on the journey, the long road to high places, that you cannot get distracted by the dysfunction by that which is external, but you've got to rely on what is internal. The internal spirit that lives within. Because scripture says, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Habakkuk says, not only do you have to 
not be distracted by the dysfunction. But, but I suggest to you, the prophet says, you gotta adjust so you can advance. You gotta adjust so you can advance. It's in verse 19, the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hind's feet. Look what happens here, Habakkuk suggests, while God may not change what's around me, he'll change me. He may not fix it. I know y'all didn't come for that this morning. Because y'all would have flipped out if I said he's going to change them. <laughs> y'all would be, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Habakkuk says. Joy, Joy, isn't that the advice that you give some of your folks? I don't want you to break any HIPAA laws, but you say, no, uh, uh, you, we can't work with them. They're not in my office. I'm talking to you. Yeah. I, I, God speaks to Rebecca and says, this is what I can do for you. I can change your feet yeah. even if I don't change the journey. Yeah. He says, I'll make your feet like uh, Heinz feet and perhaps that's been the lesson that we've been trying or been trying to teach or God has been trying to teach us at least in the pandemic that we got to learn how to change and do what we need to do so we can get where we need to be even if nothing else changes there was a word that came out that was pivot and sometimes you got to pivot you got to learn to do the same things that you've always been doing in a different way and just because we had to learn a different way we have found easier ways and some things have just been more efficient and God is telling somebody this morning that I know the journey is getting rough and the going is getting mighty tough I know you would like the conditions of the trail or the mountain to change but no honey I'm not doing that for you I'm going to change you watch your feet I'll make your feet like Heinz feet I need you to adjust I need you to work on you. So uh, that the next time you go into your prayer closet on your knees, mumbling before you go into work, whatever the situation is that has you perplexed and stressed out, just ask the Lord, uh, work on me. Uh, I don't care if you change them. Uh, I don't care if you turn that around. But as long uh, as you make me adaptable, uh, I know that I will get uh, where you're trying to take me. Because if I can adjust, uh, I can also advance. He says, he will make my feet like hind's feet. And he will make me to walk upon mine high places. We're going on time, so I'm going to read this one more time. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hind's feet. I want to see if somebody can catch this. He will make my feet like hind's feet, and he will make me walk upon mine high places. I'm going to read it one more time. He will make my feet like hind's feet, and he will make me walk upon my high places. Hold up. Have you ever walked up a mountain? I huff and puff up a mountain. Uh, we can hike mountains yeah. and we can climb mountains yeah. but who in the world walks up a mountain I walk when the path is straight I walk when I want to strut my stuff I, I walk when the road is easy I, but when I'm going uphill when I got a hill to climb, when I'm huffing and puffing, when I'm searching for a breath, that ain't no walk in the park, honey. I'm trying to climb my way to the top. And Habakkuk says, I'm going to twist this thing on you because when you make some adjustments in your life, what is wearing somebody else out, what has everybody else sweating, tired, and distressed will have you walking. You'll just be walking. It won't stress you out. You won't be out of breath. You'll walk while others climb. 
And perhaps that is the litmus test for you to ask yourself and to find out if I need to change. That, that, that's it, Minister Deborah. That, that, that if I'm all flabbergasted and distraught by the least little bit of news, I read one text and I'm about to throw the phone. I got to step to the side. I got to pull over. I got to hold up before I write the email. Perhaps that is you climbing out of breath, exhausted. And God shows up and speaks through Habakkuk and he says, there is a better way. Yeah. Yeah. That if you allow God to make some adjustments, yeah. you'll be able to advance and you'll be able to walk. The long road to high places can't be distracted by the dysfunction. Yeah. Got to adjust so you can advance. Uh, whenever you're walking outside, I know this is something that uh, everybody older than me, I'll just say that to be safe. Something you, you all will do when we're walking. If I'm approaching some steps and you're walking in front of me, the courteous thing for you to say is, watch your step. If I'm coming up on something that I wouldn't expect, moving from a sidewalk to a crosswalk, going across some expected rough and terrain, you just say, hey, watch your step. Because the person who has walked ahead of you, they have already experienced all right, all right. what you potentially have not seen. And the courteous thing to do once you have experienced a, a potential danger uh, that someone else may not be aware of is just to say, Mike, wa watch your step. Uh, and so somebody is curious this morning, what in the world are hind's feet? Uh, and all the hind's feet are is just a part of the body of a deer that knows how to watch its own step. Uh, yes, a deer has four legs. Two in the front, two in the back, you've seen them before. But what's significant about uh, the deer, the hind, if you will, that, that female deer, is that it, she is able to move with absolute precision and accuracy. Uh, because without anyone else being around, uh, she's able to plant her back two feet in the exact same position that she once planted her first two feet. In essence, her back feet are listening up, uh, and they listen to the front feet when they say, watch your step. And so the deer has some special feet uh, that allows it to step with depth and tact and integrity, and it moves with great precision. And guess what? Whatever is behind it follows up, so they don't trip, they don't fall. They can walk up the mountains. You get it. They can walk while others are climbing because they don't miss their step. They don't trip up because they know how to watch right, their right. step. They have great steps. All right, all right. So perhaps Habakkuk uses this illustration of the hind's feet uh, uh, to let us know that if you're ever traveling, that not only will God establish your steps, but he will establish your steps to enhance your sight. Uh -huh. The hinds feet are special, okay. but they're only enhanced by the hinds. I, I, I'll just make this simple for y'all. Y'all know the word hindsight. That's what you say. Yeah, in hindsight, I would have, shoulda, coulda. And, and that's the phrase. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Well, the root of the word hindsight is hind. And so the word is derived 
from the fact that this deer, the further it goes, the higher it walks because it doesn't have to climb, that it gains a sense of perspective. The vintage point by which it observes what is behind, what is lower, is different. It is improved. As it climbs or walks higher, it gets a different vantage point or a better view of what is actually taking place on the ground or in the lower elevations. In essence, that hindsight serves as a particular sort of vision where he can look back or she can look back over her history, the journey that they've made, and be able to survey and take an analysis of just how far they have come. So perhaps the hidden message in the scripture is the higher you go, the more things make sense. With every step up the mountain, God not only uses your steps, but he begins to enhance uh, your sight. Uh, that God makes a little bit more sense the higher and the higher I go. The higher I go, I see just a little bit more that God works all things together for my good. The higher I go, I found out that no weapon formed against me shall prosper and that in every lying tongue shall cease. The higher I go in God, I have come to learn that though he slay me, I can still trust him. The mountain may be steep, but I can keep on going. The higher I go, I've come to learn that his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures forever. I want somebody to say, the higher I go, the higher I go, I keep on seeing God from new levels and new vantage points. He takes me higher and I see something else. And that's what we've been celebrating here this morning is hindsight. Is the ability to look back over your life ain't well now. And to see faces uh, that you haven't seen in a while. Um, Tamla Mann said it like this, uh, I've been a lot of places uh, and I've seen a lot of faces, uh, but I've never been uh, in this place uh, time and time again. Um, I never thought I'd win, uh, but I've never been in this place. Uh, and so uh, we celebrate uh, on October 17th, uh, 2021, uh, all the places that he's taken you from the hills of Columbia, Tennessee, Williamsport Pike, Tennessee, <laughs> from the farm uh, all the way to Methodist Hospital. God has been guiding your steps. Uh, it's been a long road, uh, but he's got you to some high places. Uh, but you're not alone this morning because the Bible says uh, what he does uh, for her, he's also done for you. Uh, and I want to know, is there anybody here uh, who's had some long and lonely roads, uh, but God has been leading you uh, and guiding you every step of the way. Uh, and yes, the road was long, uh, but God has now gotten you to a high place. So, what I like, when you have hindsight, you don't need your glasses. <laughs> don't, don't think about hindsight when you're driving around. Uh, is when you get to the peak of the mountain, you stand there and you have a perspective. And so, if y'all want to add this out, you can. Because I need you to look over the metaphorical mountain range of your life uh -huh. and look back and see all of the things that didn't make sense. How they hurt you. But once you got to the top of the mountain, you can say, God, uh, they hurt me, but you healed me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, when you get to the mountain, you look on the other side and say, oh, uh, that made, didn't make sense when they were talking about me. Uh, but they talked about me, and guess what? God gave me a testimony. Uh, oh, they broke me. Uh, they hurt my feelings. Uh, but they did it just so God could bless me. Uh, and I want to know, is there anybody here uh, who has made it to the top of your mountain. Yes, the road has been long, but you've now made it to the peak of your life, and you can look back and see where God has brought you from. You can connect the dots and make sense out of nonsense and see that the Lord has been guiding you on the long road to high places. For every mountain, 
He's brought me over for every trial. He's seen me through uh, for every blessing. Uh, I sing hallelujah. And for this, I give you praise. I've referenced a few songs in the message today. There was one that came to my mind as I was studying and preparing for this message. And it said, the road is rough and the going gets tough and the hills are hard to climb. But I started out a long time ago there's not a doubt in my mind that I made a decision for myself I decided to make Jesus my choice that, that's a choice that, that everybody is confronted with And that's the question that I'm going to pose to someone in the house this morning who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ and the free pardon of your sin. That the only reason, uh, uncle, that I think you made it down the long road to the high places is because you just decided to make Jesus your choice. That's what salvation is. Salvation is not just for the moment. But to say, God got me, not only now, but he got me later. He's going to take me all the way to my home in glory. And so if you're contemplating, do I want to do this again? Is this really worth it? Is this just, you know, just to come down and make people, you know, think I'm doing the right thing? No, it ain't really that. <laughs> but you're going to secure the destination of your soul and more than that, you're going to have someone who walks with you each and every step along life's way. So if that's you, would you raise your hand? Let's lift that.
there are our Father and our God. The songwriter got it right. We know it by experience. It is on our resume of life. This metaphorical mountain range we've been climbing, we've had ups and downs, we've had highs and lows. But we realize in this moment and this day that we made it, we didn't make it on our own might and on our own strength and our own power. But there was one thing that we did do. We made a decision a long time ago that, that we choose you. And because we made you our choice, you, you're, you're helping us along uh, this long road to high places. You're blocking out the distractions. You're helping us adjust so we can advance. God, you're establishing our steps so you can show us what this whole journey was about. So now, right now, God, I, I, I ask that you would help me, that you would hold the hand of my brother or my sister who finds himself, as the Mars family said, on the rough side of the mountain, <laughs> that you would make their climb a walk, that your salvation would continue to rescue, restore, and revive them, that when it gets tough, that you would speak to them that you would give them the courage to continue on. Because God, today we stand together celebrating as believers uh, that there is a peak. And at that peak, we give you praise. As we look back over our lives and we survey our history and we see the ways that you've made, the doors that you've opened, how you have brought us from there to here, and we are thankful. So God, we thank you for what you've not only done in our lives, but we thank you for what you've done in the lives of this church. We thank you for how you brought this church family from there to here. But more importantly, we thank you for the family that you have uh, put up front uh, to lead the way to serve as tour guides, to go through their own stuff, uh, but to lead us all through our own stuff. We thank you for the strength uh, of First Lady, Leading Lady Walt Nell Boyd. Uh, we thank you uh, that she has been a support for her pastor, but while not only being a support for her pastor and husband, she is also led with integrity. She's led not only in the home, but on a job, in the church, in her family. And Lord, we thank you for her ministry. We thank you for the ministry of the pastor of this church. We thank you for my uncle. We thank you for the great things that you put on his heart and allowed him to do. We thank you for those things that are yet to come. We trust you that when we get to the other side of the mountain, that you're going to behold another wondrous view. And that before we know it, all these things will be over. And we'll be able to look and say, look what God has done. We'll smile and we'll survey as we begin to look in hindsight and see your glory. For it is in the name of Jesus the Christ, all God's saints said together, amen. Amen. Let's give God some more praise for the word of God, for the man of God, for the message from God on this morning. Thank you, Minister Radford, for digging out of the text and giving us what you have given us on this morning. Strength to go on on this morning. So uh, at this time, uh, you may prepare your offering to give. If you're in the sanctuary, we will give as we exit there. Uh, if you would, there are four ways to give. It's on the screen there. Uh, so as we exit there, you can give. If you need an envelope, if you'll raise your hand, one of the hospitality ministry members will give that for you there. If you've got a special gift for pastor's anniversary, uh, you may put that on the other line. Just put pastor's anniversary. And if you're so inclined and you have a special gift for a leading lady on this morning. If you would just put first lady, leading lady on that other spot there, we will make sure that funds get where they are to go to uh, in the appropriate place there. Every dime that you give will go to that place, all right? Uh, if you are online, you can mail in or you can text to give or you can go to www.ocogindy.org.
Uh, so we thank you so much for your liberal giving, uh, as you have always done. Uh, and we pray that God would give it back to you uh, in great measure. Uh, at this time, we're going to get ready and have a um, gift presentation. And then we will get ready and do uh, any tributes or reflections on this morning followed by Anna Reed's remarks and then uh, Minister Jonathan Radford uh, will come back uh, and give us the benediction. Uh, they're getting ready to come with gift presentation. Uh, Sister LaFonda Lillard it will be giving the gift presentation on this morning. Will you say amen as she comes? this morning. Um, I have been given the extreme pleasure of presenting um, Leading Lady Boyd uh, with a few uh, gifts. <laughs> um, but before I do that, I would like to say to both of you, um, thank you so much for your 30 years of leadership and guidance um, and honoring God's call on your lives to um, serve his people and to be an example of his love and his love for his people um, and teaching us through his word. Um, I know on a personal note that from the moment that I walked into the doors here that this place has felt very much um, like home. I knew very early on my visits that I would be joining just because my second visit um, a lot of you were like, oh, hi, sister, you came back, and you knew my names, and I know that that doesn't come from just the members alone. That is a reflection of the leaders of the church, so thank you for all that you do. Leading lady, I would like to read um, scripture. Um, it is Proverbs 30 and 25. scripture states strength and honor are her clothing she shall rejoice in time to come she opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness she watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness her children rise up and call her blessed her husband also and he praises her truly have all the attributes of this virtuous wife, virtuous woman in the scripture. You also, um, during a very rough time in my life, every time that I saw you, I saw her several times at the eatery at Methodist, and she truly, Stephen, did minister to me and my sisters while we were there and made sure that um, we were comforted during that time. And we got to, I saw you at our favorite uh, <laughs> shopping place. And you have just always been so very kind and loving. And I know that I appreciate the kind, loving person that you are and the support that you are for our pastor. So thank you so very much. We would like to present to you this coat coach, excuse me, tote bag, so that as you are carrying on the business of your uh, daily lives, you have something to do that in style. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> if you will turn it. We also have for you a apron as you are making those wonderful um, treats for everyone. Everyone who's gotten up here has said something about your cooking. So here is a custom apron that says Leading Lady Boyd. You have some smell goods, Jimmy Chew. <laughs> and 
stand so that you can take a moment to kick your feet up and not bake. Here's a gift card to the Cake Bake Shop. And then you have two shirts to your um, alma mater, MT, no, excuse me, sorry, uh, MTSU. There we go, I got it. <laughs> so a couple shirts for you to, um, you know, wear around. So thank you so much for everything that you do. We absolutely love you and appreciate you. And God bless you. God bless you both. <laughs> you. Thank you for the gift presentation to our leading ladies. Uh, at this time, we will have uh, reflections and tributes, uh, and we've got people from all over here uh, to honor our leading lady uh, from Tennessee, Michigan, uh, Georgia, people Kentucky, online, everywhere. Uh, so, uh, would either one of my wonderful aunts like to get, have some words to say on this morning? Aunt Sherelle, the favorite aunt, she's going to come. Because her ship is coming in, and I need to make sure that I'm a part of it. We can see it. <laughs> You know, been knowing about the anniversary and everything, and I was watching um, the news, and um, there was some man I can't remember where he was from, but he was, had lived a hundred and something years, and um, I had, was thinking to myself, kind of giving me a chuckle. I said, "I'm gonna get." I don't know if y'all keep up with Tyler Perry, but one of his shows it was um, when the, when Brown's daddy died, and he was all down up under the pull up here talking about, let me say something about my ditty. Let me say something about my ditty. And so the preacher let him get up, and he stayed up and stayed up and stayed up. And I said, well, I'm going to have to get to Annapolis and get down there and say, uh, Stephen, let me say something about my sister and my brother. So, so I wanted to get up and just tell y'all, the man that you know, been 100 years ago, the reporters always ask, you know, well, what did you do to make you, you know, live so long or whatever? And the man said, um, serve the Lord and be kind to people. And I said, well, that doggone woman and walk there going to be here forever because <laughs> that is exactly what they have done and they have led by example. And I want to thank y'all on a personal basis because if it had not been for my big sister, only the Lord knows where I would be back when I was a teenager and I was a challenge to my parents. And Warren and Warner had, you know, I hadn't even been, I mean, y'all been married, I don't know, not too long, because um, Mike was a baby. And uh, Warner called mom and dad and told basically to send me to her. And I thought, why is she meddling me? You know, I don't bother her, why is she bothering me? And at the time, I didn't understand. But in hindsight, on them hand legs, I want to thank the Lord for my big sister. And I thank the Lord for my big brother because they were just married and they could, he could have easily said, you know, I'm starting my life and, you know, your little sister, that's her problem. You know, I'm not going, you know, but God's grace. And at the time, I didn't understand but I want to thank y'all because y'all saved me. And that was because y'all knew the goodness of the Lord. And I was trying, and I was always, you know, saying, well, I'm the black sheep, and I'm going to march to be to my drama, and blah, blah, blah. But see, God's grace, I was marching to my beat, and I was doing the black sheep thing, but God's grace blessed me with a sister and a brother that knew what I needed to do. And I just want to thank God. At the time, many years ago, <laughs> uh, I didn't understand. But you know, like the song say, you understand better by and by. By and by. Because through y'all, I've been able to let my light shine. 
so that my girls can see the good works of the Lord. And like I said, sometimes when things happen to you and you think people are meddling or in your way or doing, trying to keep you from getting what you got to get, uh, sometimes it's just God's way of, of getting you in line. And I thank God. I just thank him I, every day. Because like I said, at the time, I was a teenager. I knew everything. They didn't know nothing. They was trying to keep me from living a good life is what I thought. But now, in hindsight, I can tell what the works of the Lord was for me. And I just want to let y'all know that I love you and that y'all are just so special to me. Um, I call Mike my mini-me in many ways, but he was maybe not as off track as I was. But uh, it was just through being able to come up here and help with him as a baby, you know. It was just, like I said at the time, I didn't understand, but I just thank God for, for saving me through you all, you know. And I don't know if I've ever told y'all thank you or not, and that's been, how old are you, Mike? 41, isn't it? 41 years. <laughs> so, but I just want to thank y'all. And I, like I said, if, if, if the advice that the man that lived to be over 100 was to serve the Lord and be kind to people, y'all are going to be here for a mighty long time. <laughs> thank you. Let us say amen. so gracious for this family. Got the homeborn servants of my wife. Got the angel of the Lord. And then it's inspiration in my heart, soul, and life. My own family don't reach out to me. on it to see if everything's okay. And I really appreciate that. Ever since joining the family, uh, through the grace of God, and God has separated me from sheep and heifers. And I'm still here. I still love her right today. So many things happen in people's lives. Like it happened with me. They were uprooted and gone. It seemed like somebody else and everything. But the love that we had, it was universal. Granddaddy, grandmama, talking about the whole family. I'm saying love you. Papa boy, the best boy, and everything. They love you, man. So, I said, man, I'm so grateful. So, Betty, a drop your love. I assume I'm saying it right. But anyway, it's a love that reaches through the core of your heart, mind, and soul. Only God can give us that. Thank you, Uncle E, for those words there. Let us move on before we all get broke down in here thinking about Aunt Angie. I, I had to tell them, y'all have to ease into that. Y'all just don't say Angie. Y'all have to say, and you know, Angie, y'all just throw it out there. All right. At this point, we're going to receive our honorees, and I believe Bishop will come and have some words. Oh, come on back. 
I told Stephen I was going to do this really quick. Uh, since we got the mood already down here, <laughs> uh, I'll linger there for just a second. <laughs> uh, I, I tell you, uh, this one, this probably was the harder sermon that I've preached in a while uh, because of that one reason. Uh, you all were singing. I was trying to keep from crying. I'm like, where's my mama? Um, but I, I want to tell you a couple of things before I present to you my gift. Uh, as not only being your nephew, your only nephew, I do. <laughs> are there some privileges? Uh, I, I forgot that we went to the same alma mater too, uh, MTSU, Middle and Tasha back there, Middle Tennessee, Sister Phyllis, Middle Tennessee grass as well in the house. Um, but but I, I was sitting there thinking and. Um, Uncle Warren, you have uh, presided over both of my parents' funerals. And uh, he, he, you uh, did the eulogy for my dad, but then he also, Stephen was talking about the eulogies I did, but I was able to do them because I knew I had some good backup. <laughs> because he was the backup. <laughs> I was like, if this don't work out, <laughs> if I don't know myself from somebody else, we good. And... He, he did, there wasn't a problem with it. He just, whatever you need, whatever time. And those things that may seem small in the moment, as you get older, you go through things and you hear other people's stories that don't quite sound the same, you get very thankful. And you're grateful that God has put people in your lives, not only who you're related to, but who love you enough to support you when you're at your worst and to celebrate you when you're at your best. So I'm very thankful for that. I would admit we got to your house last night and you were sick on Friday, right? Friday you were sick. Um, I was surprised that we didn't have dinner. <laughs> but she had the dessert, so I'm thankful for the desserts. And I went straight to the apple situation that you made and it was delicious as always. But I don't know if anybody else, my cousins, and this is just gonna take one minute, uh, aunts. I, I felt there was a sense of not a gloom, but there was a cloud because my mom wasn't there last night. And no one said it, but I think everybody felt it. Because for the first time in a while, we had all finally been together. Um, and she loved you all dearly. Uh, she was an ardent supporter of your ministry. Uh, and so when you get to a milestone, you want all the people who supported you along the way. But I stand here, and I think the invitation, I didn't preach just on the assignment from God, but I stood here in the power of both my late parents. I love them, and everything that they poured into me and everything that they did for me allows me to do what I do today. And I'm glad that I was able to preach the word of God and to celebrate what God has done in your life for the past 30 years. That said... Uh, it was uh, the annual convention of 2018. Uh, and if you all were there, some of you were there. I was on Facebook, and I always jokingly called my mom a preacher. But she just let them have it. She preached, <laughs> did something like that. Um, and uh, you all, every time you're together, whether it be the annual convention or anniversary or whatnot, you always end up taking a picture. And uh, you all probably didn't know at the time that this would be the last picture that you all would take together. Uh, ain't Walt now my mom, uh, ain't Sherelle, ain't B right there. Um, and I'm not one to put up pictures of people around my house. I actually have no photos. But I do appreciate art. So I did something for you, ain't Walt now wanted to do something especially for you and it's not framed because I did not have the muscles to carry it on that Delta flight but uh, all the framing and everything is taken care of in a card for you but I want to present you with this this is a uh, uh, this is a commission painting of that final picture that you took with your two sisters uh, and your sister who's now with the Lord but it will be with you for always and I hope this not only makes you remember the good times but it remembers that smile that joy that you all shared and that is still with us today God bless you and I love you
everybody that's on the floor, you can get up. Because that'll, that'll make you get in the floor. Yeah. Uh, and what sweet memories we do have of Aunt Angie. Because Aunt Angie was a mover and a shaker. So uh, as we started planning and I thought about it, uh, she would have been here today, but she probably would have been here every week also because she would have found a conference in Chicago and went there, drove here, went to Louisville, found something to do there, and by the time you know it, she would have been here all five Sundays uh, of this there. But what uh, great memories of support and love that we have of hers. Uh, at this time, we're going to have remarks from the honorees uh, on today. Uh, can we praise God for, thank God for <laughs> Bishop and Leading Lady Boyd and Leading Lady on her day. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, today, today because it's her day, I, I'm going to go. herself. Uh, Jonathan, thank you. Uh, thank you for the word and uh, thank you for uh, your diligence in ministry. Uh, and then when you finish that side gig, you know, you got broadcast and you can do this full time. <laughs> uh, and I am uh, appreciative when I hear ministers uh, who are thoughtful who don't just go for the hoop. Ain't nothing wrong with the hoop. But when you throw some good meat down first, all the gravy will be there. You don't have to worry about it. Thank you so much. Thank you to my sisters and my nieces for being here and, and everybody else, my brother-in-law, Cliff. Uh, thank you so much for traveling. Is that Dougie back there? Man, praise God. Thank you for being here. Uh, from Michigan. Uh, thank you for everybody. Thank you again to this church family uh, for honoring us in such a way um, for these uh, for all these weeks in October. Thank you for your thoughtfulness. Uh, just thank you for being kind and good. And uh, lastly, uh, thank you for setting aside this day to honor my wife especially. Um, I don't know uh, how other pastors do it. I, I'm not in their household. I don't know the dynamics, but I know uh, in my household, my wife has been a, a steady and uh, uh, ardent supporter of my ministry and my preaching. Uh, she gives me space and gives me time and has always done that, so I appreciate her so much. Uh, and uh, it doesn't matter where we go, I can always have one amen. I know I got, I know I got me an amen. And uh, so even when, when COVID struck and uh, we, we just did the virtual service, uh, she was ready to, to watch from home too. I said, no, you got to come. <laughs> Don't nobody else come. You got to come. Uh, and so she's been here uh, every step of the way for these 30 years of ministry and 42 years of marriage. We, uh, I thank God for her and uh, thank God for the gift that she is uh, to me, to our family, and also to this church. Uh, we're, we're different in a lot of ways, uh, but God uh, does that in many instances, that he would take our differences uh, not to make a competition, but to complement one another uh, so that, you know, uh, if, if, if you get some cold over here, you got some hot over here, and it's comfortable uh, all together. And so uh, thank God for my wife. Thank God for her love and her support uh, for my ministry all of these years. And, and just thank you so much. Uh, this has been a good three weeks off, and I still got two more to go. God bless you. Amen.
amen. Uh, not a, a whole lot that uh, you catch me uh, kind of lost uh, for words, but uh, I'm grateful uh, for, for today in the planning and all. I didn't know what, what all was happening. Uh, originally, I didn't know uh, speakers and all, and but I decided a long time ago, uh, whatever way, because I had a, a friend that was uh, a pastor's wife, and this was before uh, I think my husband even started preaching and all, and she was doing so much work to get our anniversary together and getting the big chairs and have, have, and all this, that, and other. So I said, uh, once we start having anniversaries, if they don't set the chair out there, <laughs> I won't sit in it. I'll just sit in whatever chair is there. <laughs> so it'll be left on them to get it together. So I uh, praise God. Thank you for the honoring. Then I heard, uh, because my sisters kept saying, well, who is it? What is it? Tell Stephen to call us. Tell Stephen to call us and all. So Stephen, call your aunts. Call them. I don't know what it is. I don't know. So they finally got in touch with him to get some details. And then later on I heard Jonathan is one of the speakers. Well, I still didn't connect it to this Sunday and that this Sunday was a Sunday of honor for me. But praise God for it. Thank you all so much for what you have done and how you have honored us today. And I am so privileged to have family here, uh, which is traditional because when my mom was alive, she made sure that they were getting together to come for the anniversary every year. And so no matter where your mom was living at that time, if need be, she flew in to meet up with the group here and uh, was here for the first message, uh, all those things. So we're just so grateful and all. And my family that's here, y'all stand up. All my family that's here, stand up. They pulled up to the to the house yesterday, and uh, uh, you you can be. They pulled up, and one of the grandkids said, "Grandma, here comes your people. They in a church van." <laughs> I said, "You sure that's them?" And he's like, "Yeah, that's them out there. They in a church van." So we had a, a, van, a van full, and I was. The original intention was that I was supposed to cook. Thursday, I don't know, something like the flu hit me. <clears throat> and so I've been uh, having some challenges since then, but I was able to get Jonathan's apple dessert together and that chocolate pie together for him. And all, uh, but we did, we had a, a good time this past weekend and everything. Thank you all so much for the sacrifice. It's not a big, a little thing to come and to travel and to be here with us. And I appreciate it so much uh, for what you've done. Jonathan and I, we have a special connection in more ways than one. First of all, when he was little, he had a little habit of when he kissed you, he wanted to bite you. And so I said, okay, if you bite me, I'm going to bite you back. So it's, <laughs> and guess what? He did it, and I did it. <laughs> my sister's like, you bit my baby. You bit my baby. He bit me. I bit him back. <laughs> but it is such an honor to have you be the speaker today in a service that was a service of honor for me. And I'll thank God for you. Thank God for the, the picture and everything, the memories and all. And I thank God for the strength that he's given you. I don't forget when my phone rang at like 824 because the time flashed up. And you called me. You said... Uh, Aunt Walt Nell, this is Jonathan. And I said, yeah, I saw that. But you didn't have any distress in your voice, so I didn't know what the next thing was. And you said, I don't know what happened last night, but my mom died. 
and all I could do was just scream. I knew you wouldn't be calling and lying to me, and I'm like, Jonathan, what are you saying? What are you saying? And I'm hollering, and the people from the other offices are coming, trying to see what's going on, and the only thing I could say is my sister died, and my sister died. But you gave me a word of encouragement right there during that moment. You said, ain't Walt now the Lord is going to get us through this. That was strength. Because your aunt had just crumbled when, when you called me and told me that. But you had strength to, to help and to help hold us together when you said that and so that's what I leaned on I said yeah I know he will but at this moment it is so hard and I'm grateful I'm grateful for the the um, the um, what your mom uh, had planted in you and I remember her calling me and the sisters and she said well, we got a preacher in the family we was like who we was cooking we was like so we referred to him as boy <laughs> so we said she said boy we was like what <laughs> she said and we said how do you know when she said oh yeah we uh she said he had called me and said this but I tell you what and y'all have to know Angie to know her to go into these details and she's like well I didn't know if he done got hold of something bad to eat or whatever and he's calling and telling me this so you know what she did she called his pastor <laughs> and talked to him it's like now is he on the right track is he on there and he gave her the assurance that he had talked to him and that Jonathan had acknowledged the calling that the Lord had on his life. So we are grateful and grateful for you continuing on and all that. I used to uh, tease her because uh, when he was little, half the little stuff I couldn't understand what he said. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what in the world is he saying and all this? How is he going to, you know, talk and all this? And now he is a news reporter he is a weather reporter <laughs> and all with this because I was like I don't even he, he can't even talk plainly was what it was to me but uh he's um uh, uh my as they say my only nephew because I have the boys and the rest of them have the girls so they got everybody got mixtures and so that's my only nephew we got that connection Thank you so much again. I love you and I'll appreciate you all. Appreciate everybody coming out, those that are here. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I've uh, had a few milestones uh, these past couple of months. Uh, last month, uh, I had 40 years of service at Methodist Hospital. And so that's been a journey because all of this ministry transpired after I started working there. And it translated into some other things and all. And I'm grateful for the opportunities that the Lord has given. Yeah, I do have a chair and people come into that office and uh, I know somebody came in recently and they just wanted, I said, Okay, you said it's in here, it's in here. If these walls could talk, it would be a whole bunch of stuff and they took here. But if that's, you want it in, it's in here. And thank God for the uh, confidence. A lot of times people come in and all that, and they say, ask your husband, ask your church to pray for us and all. So I say, I get to minister and I, you help get to help pay for me ministering. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. So, uh, had that had a birthday the other day. Had a birthday the other day. Thank God for that and all. So everybody want to know when am I retiring and all. So the saying is, I'm one day closer than I was yesterday. So I haven't given out the secret date yet uh, as to when I'm retiring. Uh, 
but it's in the future. It's in the future. Again, thank you and all. And cousins, it is so good to see you all. Uh, they, the, the little van went through Louisville and picked up and brought them here. And these first cousins, we haven't had a chance to get together. And I suggested that, oh, maybe the weekend y'all come to Indianapolis, you know, see if they can come. And then everybody said, oh, well, we're not coming we'll be able to come that weekend. And all. I said, okay. So we just moved on. I said, okay, we understand and all this stuff. And now here they all showed up. We're glad, glad, glad for everybody that's here. Thank you. I need to close out because I'll be continuing on. There is in the back, and the children call her Cousin Dolly. Wave your hand, Cousin Dolly. I've been knowing her, well, the whole time I was at Methodist, and she's long gone from Methodist, but she still keeps in touch and all, and has been there uh, whenever something has happened and uh, whatever she has uh, called to check on. She met my sisters some years back at somebody's wedding. And so she's always checking to see, how's your sisters doing? How are your sisters doing? But thank you all so much. Uh, it's been a great day. Didn't know what today would be, what it would bring and all like that, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, I continue to serve as your leading lady, the lady of the house. And uh, with the God's help, we'll continue on. And all I, uh, I love this guy. I love this guy. <laughs> and so with that, you know, I'm, uh, the, the, the ministry and all, uh, I tell him when different things happen, I say, it's your fault. It's because of you. <laughs> And so it's become a little inside joke with us. It's your fault. And oh, last year he sent some flowers. I don't know, we'd been doing something and had a lot of stuff going. And so on the card, he said, it's my fault, love worn. And that was it. So people come in your office, and, you know, and, uh, oh, your flowers, oh, those pretty, those roses smell so good. What's the occasion? So I turned the card around. So they said, it's your, it's my fault. Love worn. And they put the card back down. They said, okay. <laughs> they thought we had a falling out or whatever. I had to explain what the inside joke was, that it's my, uh, that it's his fault. But with this journey, the Lord has been good to us. He has been good to us. This rough road has, uh, you know, we found the places that's made it smoother. And uh, the, those hand beat, you know, I guess they got tougher, you know, <laughs> at all. But it's, uh, as I said, it's, it's just good to be here. I thought I had, had myself all together. You come up with that picture and everything, and I'm now just got me going and all but praise God for what uh, what you've done thank you again for the celebration amen uh, at this time if everyone will stay in our guest speaker he's coming back to dismiss us uh, on your way out pastor and leading lady they will be at the door you can greet them uh, at the door you can also deposit your offering into the offering basket there uh, with the feet just inside of the door since it's a little chilly outside. God bless you. So, sorry. Uh, announcements. Uh, if you'll continue to join us uh, each week, 10 a.m. on next Sunday, uh, Pastor Marshall Tucker and New Faith Ministries will be here. They'll be our uh, guest on next week, and then we'll conclude on the last Sunday of the month with grand celebration with Bishop Jerry Maiden from Shreveport, Louisiana will be our guest speaker. On the last Sunday, uh, the colors are navy, turquoise, and silver, or blue. Just put on some clothes and come and celebrate with us. If you got some blue, some silver, some turquoise, put that on. If you don't, just put on some clothes, come celebrate with us. That's what's most important. But if you want to support and throw on some colors of festivity colors, uh, then you can come on and get it navy, turquoise or silver. Uh, that's all the announcements. 
I, I, well, no, I'm going to respond to three things really quick. Um, as far as the murmuring and mumbling, I just want to tell you what the Lord did for Moses, he also did for me. Also, I should say, as a news reporter, you got my ears pricked. We got breaking news. You are retiring from Methodist. I got to get a date. We'll talk after this is over. And on a more serious note, I will say this. I, I, I have been in some other denominations uh, since growing up in the original Church of God. And uh, one of the things that I had to learn quickly is that women were not respected and supported in all roles of the church when I got into other denominations because it was completely foreign to me to think that women were not celebrated and allowed to do certain things in the church. And this is an example of that, honoring the women of God, whether they are preaching or whether they are supporting their preacher. Thank you for being a fine example of that legacy of the church. And Uncle Warren, thank you as you continue to build that in the churches all around the nation. Glory to God for what you all are doing. And thank you all for celebrating my aunt today. Without further ado, we'll wrap this thing up. Lord, we thank you for being in our midst today. We know that when we leave here, we will not depart from your presence. And so we ask that your presence will lead us and guide us. That it would give us direction from this point forward. Now may the peace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of you. Henceforth forevermore, and all God's people said, amen. <laughs>